We have anacondas giving birth to live young and kangaroos giving birth to jelly bean sized offspring. There are also whales that give birth to live young underwater. Hey, that sounds interesting. Let's start with that. Don't swipe or click away because here are crazy ways animals give birth. Whales. The term whales is large and encompasses all of the large sea mammals. There are blue whales, humpback whales, sperm whales, etc. Because of this, their mating habits vary. Some of them will travel thousands of miles from their feeding grounds and go to their mating grounds fasting along the whole journey. Others will barely move and they'll mate at the same spot where their feeding grounds are. Because of this variety, the gestation period can last anywhere from 9 to 18 months depending on the species of whale. On top of that, whales will produce offspring once every 1 to 6 years. Because they're mammals, the mother whale will carry her offspring in the womb during the gestation period. Then when it's time to give birth, the baby will be born underwater. After that, the mother and the baby will swim to the surface so the baby can take its first breath. Now that's sweet. Speaking of sweet, the baby whales suckle on the mother underwater. How adorable. Up next is the Emperor Penguin. If you ask us, the Emperor Penguin has one of the hardest births in the world. It's not because the egg is too large, it's because the mother penguin has to gently cup the egg with its tail and legs as it's being laid. Just a few seconds on the ice and the egg would freeze to death and never hatch. This one managed to catch it just at the right time. From this moment on, she'll hand the egg over to the male while she and the other females go feed and recoup the body weight they lost during the pregnancy. During this time, it'll be the father's job to hatch the egg and bring new life into their cold world. Now let's go underwater with the seahorse. When it comes to seahorses, their mating rituals are slightly different from any other animal. Sure, it all starts normal, meaning the male will start courting the female, but after the female decides to court the male, that's when it all changes. The female gives the male her eggs, he inseminates them, and keeps them in his belly pouch. From now on, it's the male's job to take care of the eggs and to hatch them. The gestation period takes about one month, but the father needs to time the moment just perfectly. It all has to be done at the perfect moment, otherwise it's gonna be for nothing. Once the time is right, the male will release the little opening at the belly and out will come all of these small seahorses that will have to brace themselves for the harsh new world waiting for them out there. This animal we all know, the kiwi birds. They're the national symbol of New Zealand, but that's not as interesting as the eggs of the kiwi bird. They lay the biggest egg of any bird in the world. They can weigh almost a pound. And we know what you're thinking, but what about ostrich eggs? Don't they weigh about 3.1 pounds? While the ostrich itself weighs between 200 and 240 pounds. This means that the ostrich eggs are only 2% of the weight of the mother. The kiwi bird egg on the other hand has to give birth to an egg that's 20% of the mother's body weight. To put this into comparison, a kiwi bird's egg would be the same relative size as a human mother giving birth to a 4 year old child. Not so small now, is it? In any case, the kiwi bird's egg is comprised of 65% yolk. This allows the baby bird to smash that like button just like you should do if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, it allows the baby bird to become fully developed inside the egg before ever cracking the shell. In fact, they are one of the few birds that hatch with feathers on. We continue with the stingray. Stingrays have a mating period that lasts 7 whole months. During this time, the males will mate with the females and eventually fertilize the female in March, the ovulation period. This makes them the fish with one of the longest mating periods in the entire world. The mother will then carry a litter of between 5 and 13 little stingrays that will hold the embryos inside their wombs without the need for a placenta. Inside of feeding the young through an umbilical cord, they use their yolk sac as food. Once this food source is depleted, the mother will provide them with something called uterine milk, which is enough to sustain them until birth. They'll then leave the mother's body and swim close to her until they grow to be one third of her size. At this point, they're ready to leave the mother and fend off for themselves. Now let's have a closer look at the anaconda. None of the boas lay eggs. Anacondas don't lay eggs either. They give birth to live young. After mating, the embryos will attach to the yolk sac. All of the eggs inside the mother's belly will be encased in a thin membrane, which will act as a replacement of the egg shell. Other snakes risk having their eggs eaten by predators, but not the anaconda. The mother anaconda will keep the babies inside her belly safe from predators and keep their bodies at a constant temperature. When it's time to give birth, the mother will lay these soft eggs and the young are tasked with breaking through the membrane and entering the real world. Unlike some of the other animals we mention here, baby anacondas are completely independent of the mother since day one, and they can survive all alone in the wilderness. Did you know about how giraffes give birth? We're not even going to talk about the fact that the mating ritual of the giraffe starts with the male drinking the female's urine. Yuck! 
Better to start with the gestation period. After copulation, the female giraffe will carry the baby giraffe inside the womb for 14 to 15 months. When they go into labor, they cannot lay down and give birth. They have to be standing straight up. This means that the baby giraffe will fall on the ground right after being born. No wonder they can't walk after being born. You wouldn't walk either if someone slammed you on the ground from a height of 8 feet. We know, we know, this helps their umbilical cord break after birth. We know. We're just saying there has to be a better way. Anyways, after being born from Little Giraffe is 6 feet tall, the same height as Harry Styles, and weighs anywhere between 100 and 150 pounds. Now we show you the Suriname Toad. Other toads will go through several stages of development to become adult frogs, and they have to do all of this in the wilderness. The Suriname Toad is different. After the male fertilizes the eggs, he'll push all 100 of them onto the back of the mother. There, they'll stick to the skin in the coming days, the mother's skin will grow around them, forming a honeycomb structure. Even though they're hatched, the young will stay in the little pockets for 3 to 4 months so they can fully develop. Once they've fully formed, they'll try to loosen themselves from the female's back and immediately start hunting for food. Top 3 Down under, we have the famous kangaroo. Would you believe it if we told you that this little pink critter was conceived several months ago? Well, it's true. The reason it wasn't born yet is because the mother was tending to another one of her babies, which was still in her pouch. Once this joey was out of his mom's pouch, the mother gave birth to a kangaroo that was the size of a jelly bean. This pink little jelly bean has to use its very small hands and climb through 6 inches of its mother's fur to find the pouch. This will take him about 3 minutes to do. Once it finds the pouch, the little baby will hatch onto a nipple and continue to suckle for the next 34 weeks, developing into a fully grown kangaroo, which will then continue to suckle on the mother's breast even after getting out of the pouch. Similarly small is the panda. A baby panda is born blind, pink, and helpless. They weigh only between 3 to 5 ounces, which is about 900 times smaller than the weight of their mother. Pandas usually give birth to only one cub, rarely will they give birth to twins. If they do, the mother panda will leave the weaker one to die in the wild, and it will make sure to nurture the stronger one. Now, before you go off saying how cruel that is, let us tell you why the mother would do this. You see, the majority of a panda's day is spent munching down bamboo shoots. These are very low in calories and the mother can't produce enough milk to feed two babies. So instead of taking care of two babies, which will grow up to be weak, they'll only tend to one of them. Drumroll please, the harp seal, our final pick. This is a mama harp seal, not to be rude, but she doesn't look that cute. Now take a look at that baby. That white ball of fur is what a harp seal looks like after birth. Do you know any other animal that looks more different than its parent after birth? They're white because this is the only way they can disguise themselves in the show. They cannot run away from predators, so staying out of sight is their best method of defense. Speaking of defense, we should tell you that after the birth, the mother and the baby will have only 14 days, about 2 weeks to teach and learn the necessary skills for survival. During this time, the mother will not leave her baby unless on the lookout for food. She'll make sure that the baby is all fattened up and can swim before she's off to find another mate and copulate. If by some chance the baby doesn't learn to swim before the ice breaks, it'll most likely face a tragic end. Talk about a cruel world. If you enjoyed this video, you will like the next one. This is Koala with quality content. See you soon. YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next according to your preferences.